Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Get Paid for Your Pad. Today, we have myself and Jasper. Jasper, how's it going? Everything is well here in Rio de Janeiro. Nice. Living the dream, as always. Awesome. Today, we have a special guest who is hosting in Joshua Tree. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Joshua Tree, awesome. Listen. Listen up because Cliff, Cliff Tang, that's our guest. He's going to fill you in on all the details about this amazing campground. And of course, if you're familiar with U2, uh, one of their albums is named after the this historic place called Joshua Tree, same name. So this is going to be an incredible show. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Cliff Tang to the show. Cliff, how's it going? Hey, it's going great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. All right, so Cliff, before we jump into Starlight Villas and all the cool stuff that you've been up to, why don't you just give us a little background, tell us about yourself. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't have a background in hospitality. Um, most of my uh, life I was uh, working in recruitment, uh, recently changed fields, and uh, in about two thousand, mid-2012, I had um, saved up a bunch of money, was um, ready to purchase a property, and I was pretty close to just um, picking up a single-family home in Los Angeles and uh, somehow ended up purchasing a property in Joshua Tree uh, instead. Um, it's a, actually a historic estate. There are eight villas, uh, 10,000 square feet of living spaces. And uh, I decided that the best way to share this with, with people and uh, also my love of Joshua Tree in general would be to make them into vacation rentals. So I've been doing that for about a year and a half and have been on Airbnb for about six months and it's been very successful. So uh, Cliff, just for the people who don't know where Joshua Tree is, can you tell us a little bit about the place? Because I, I heard good stories about it. Yeah, it's, it's really an amazing place. Um, it's about two hours from Los Angeles and San Diego, and um, there are about 500,000 um, acres of wilderness, and uh, it's 12th most visited national park. Uh, what is amazing is the geological rock formations it's pretty much as close as you can get to visiting Mars or another planet <laughs> in that you're getting, you're seeing these trees that look like they're from a Dr. Seuss book. You're seeing these gigantic rock formations. And in addition to that, it's one of the places in uh, the United States where the night is uh, a as clear as, as can be. And uh, so you can really see the stars and get an amazing feel of uh, what it would look like without the, I guess some say, light pollution <laughs> from the city. Wow, sounds, sounds really cool. So you have eight villas on, mm -hmm. uh, on this estate, do you? Yes, correct. Okay, and are you using just Airbnb or are you using other sites as well? Well, it's kind of an interesting story. I, I started out not even knowing about Airbnb, just uh, for some reason. Um, in the past, when my family had... Um, uh, used vacation rentals. They use VRBO. So I listed on VRBO for the first year and it, it definitely went well. And then about six months ago, uh, I started using Airbnb and immediately I saw, you know, a lot more inquiries come in and, um, uh, a lot of benefits to guests that come from Airbnb. 
just real quick, I just want to jump back to Joshua Tree. Now, I just had yeah. a group of friends go up there. It was, about, it was about 10 guys, and they just kind of wanted to have a, a weekend where they chilled out, they camped, they ate, you know, cooked a bunch of food, and relaxed. What, are, what would you say is sort of like a typical, or maybe there isn't a typical uh, vacation stay there, but what, mm -hmm. what do people typically do when they're out in, in that area? Um, well, the, the, there, there's different types of guests. I mean, certainly hiking, I would say, is uh, one of the biggest activities. It's, it's one of the only places where you can pretty much just go out there either by yourself or with a partner or a group of friends. And um, within five minutes of starting your hike, you can be completely surrounded by nature with nothing to distract you. And uh, I think it's a lot. It's very much of a of a spiritual experience just to see that. In addition to that, it, a, a lot of other things about the town are really unique. It tends to attract kind of a, a very much uh, free spirit kind of a retro vibe. All of the the shops are uh, mom and pops. I think there's like one subway and a gas station, but uh, you know, but but everything else is mom and pop shops. It's very rustic feel. And um, it's just something completely different. It feels like you're going back in time, and um, there's there's just so much to to see that uh, it, it's pretty amazing. I would say that mo most people that come, they come not just for for the hiking, but for for the whole whole experience of just being in a completely different place, away from the city, away from you know the same chain stores with the, you know the Starbucks and Target. <laughs> and Best Buy that, that all look the same throughout the world and just being somewhere completely different next to nature and with amazing art, music, and scenery. And do you find it to be enticing for families as well with kids or is it typically more of an adult uh, destination? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's definitely a place where, where you want kids to see. Um, and, uh, we've hosted a lot of families and kids and I, I it's, it's just somewhere, it's the, one of the reasons why I wanted to get a place here in the first place is I've never really heard of any other destination where everyone who comes just thinks it was the, the greatest idea ever and, and leaves happy. And I, I've just yet to really have someone say that they didn't enjoy coming to Joshua Tree. Uh, pretty much everyone who comes leaves feeling like they, they gained something. Well, it sounds like a great place and uh, look forward to go and check it out. Yeah, you guys definitely need to come. <laughs> um, wh what's, uh, so you, you've been using different sites. Uh -huh. what, how, how do the different sites compare to Airbnb? That's a good question. I think Airbnb does a lot of things really well. The fact that they, they have a dual review system and um, that you leave, rev um, you know, the, the hosts also leave reviews for the guests, the guests leave reviews um, for the hosts. It gives it a little bit more of a social network feel. It's a little, I found that it's a lot more warm and um, uh, so, so I think that that's a big deal. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, on other sites that I've used, even when you ask people for a review, sometimes, you know, the, I would say that the number that write it are maybe uh, 20% or so. And I, I don't blame them either because when you think about it, now everyone, everywhere you go, like when you go to the grocery store and the CVS and the Ralph's, when they give you the receipt here, uh, they tell you, oh, by the way, you can you know, write this review about me and you know, the survey. And it's not really realistic necessarily for, for everyone to review every, everything that they do every day. <laughs> so, but, but Airbnb does a better job at that because I think that it, because it's more of a feeling of a social network, you're both mm -hmm. reviewing each other. And uh, so, so I think that that's a big deal. I th about 80% or so of my guests do write a review. And so I think that that's a big deal because that is probably the number one thing other than your pictures that guests look at. And so that, that's a big deal. Uh, the other thing that I think that Airbnb does well is that they cater to a younger audience. I find that uh, you get – well, I mean they cater to everyone, <laughs> but they, they, they probably connect more with the younger audience. Uh, I find that more of the younger guests coming from Airbnb – 
And uh, there's also, I find fewer tire kickers. Uh, a lot of other listing sites are more like classified ads, really. And you have your phone number and you know you have your ad and you get people calling you up just like, well, I'm thinking of coming, but first I just wanted to add, you know, ask some questions. And that's not really the case with Airbnb. When you get an inquiry on Airbnb, they're going to stay somewhere. They're serious. They know. And um, it, it, it's much more a, of a platform where people that are going to book are definitely going to uh, – where, where you're definitely going to get bookings, not just people asking questions. <laughs> and so that, that's big as well. And that's something that, that I like. And um, also finally, just the user interface. It's just, it's so convenient having everything coming in as messaging um, and going straight to your phone. They make it so easy. So I really appreciate that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Airbnb is a community Whereas VRBO or, or some of the other platforms, those are platforms, right? right. Those are yeah. platforms that people use to you know to make money with the house. But Airbnb is a is a, is a community. It's and I think it's they're doing a lot of um, putting a lot of effort in to sort of create this community. And you know it's funny because when we were at the Airbnb Open uh, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, and you can you can really tell that Airbnb hosts are a specific type of people you know very true they're they're, yes. they're a very friendly sort of laid back travel loving type and and i think that's why uh, that's one of the reasons why airbnb is doing so well i think i completely agree with you um you know uh, um at the airbnb open i i found that it was so refreshing to see so many people that were really so passionate about about what they do and um, these these are people that are not just doing it for some you know not just for some extra money or um, for practical reasons. These are people that are were, were are very passionate and uh, really enjoy helping other people out as well. So, Cliff, how much time would you say you devote per week to to running your Airbnb business? Uh, it, it's a good question. It kind of varies. Um, I would say a few, uh, a few hours. Um, most of my bookings are actually direct. So I, they're, all, they're usually instant bookings. And so I always immediately reply with the directions. I get some questions here and there. And, um, and then I spend time with, uh, working with the person I have who, who, um, handles, uh, facilities and cleaning. I see. And is this, essentially your main is this kind of like your main source of income or is this a supplementary income or yeah it's a good question i i actually uh no i have a full-time job i i work in um i work in mergers and acquisitions in los angeles and uh i usually come out here to joshua tree pretty much every weekend and uh the rest of the time i'm in los angeles hey cliff um it's interesting you you just said that you get most of your bookings through the instant booking feature, right? Yes. Uh huh. Now we we've had some questions about that. Do you allow mm -hmm. everyone to use that feature, or do you set some some conditions? That's a good question. Um, as of now, I, I do let everyone just book. Uh, this may not be the the soundest strategy, but I figure that the people that come to Joshua Tree have been so good, and I have I have yet to have a single problem. That uh, unless something goes wrong, I figure I might as well just just keep on doing that. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because uh, you can, you can set uh, you can set different conditions. For example, you yep. can say that you only allow people with at least one positive review, mm -hmm. which is what I personally use. Mm -hmm. And you can also uh, set the parameter of how many days in advance people can can use this feature. Right. Yeah, yeah. I actually noticed that recently there's been some changes and a little bit more flexibility to, uh, to, to the calendar settings. So Cliff, in the time that you've hosted, can you give us your most memorable guest or moment as far as using Airbnb, something that, that was really special to you? <laughs> you know, I knew you were going to ask me that because I'm a fan of your, your podcast. And, uh, but you know what? I, I haven't, 
I really can't say that I've had one specific guest that that really stands out. Um, I, I think that the whole the experience as a whole has been definitely very life changing. I think that there's something very uh, almost primordial uh, about providing people who are on a journey shelter <laughs> and uh, especially when at a, in a place like Joshua Tree where a lot of them are coming for to experience something incredible and so I have a lot it's, it's really a lot of little connections and, and and this great feeling when people tell me that I had you know that they had such a great time here uh, they like the designs they like the accommodations and uh, it's really, I would say it's an accumulation. Uh, there isn't, there, I don't, I definitely don't have one story. Like uh, I listened to the, to your Kimberly Barker <laughs> episode where she had a guest that, you know, ended up naming her child after her. And I, I don't think that that will happen to me, <laughs> but I will get a lot of <laughs> that. That was fantastic by the way. Uh, but I don't, I, I will, um, I do get a lot of satisfaction from, you know, from, from providing a good service to people and then being appreciative well, the thing is, Jasper is supposed to actually screen our guests because you're not supposed uh -huh. to be on the show unless you've had a child named after you from one of your guests. <laughs> so you've somehow squeezed oh, in. <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, so do you ever, Cliff? Do you ever think about potentially one day maybe quitting your day job and doing this and 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 uh, sort of having more of a flexible lifestyle, something more similar to Jasper? Yeah, I mean that that that's exactly. Um, even though I haven't quit my job, that that's exactly actually why um, I did it, and um, th that is you know that's something that's probably I in the future. Um, when you know when I started in a new field uh, after, we'll put it this way: after after fifteen years in one field, um, having income from from the property allowed me to kind of explore other things in my main career and to take more chances. And uh, so I, I think that the, the essence of having a rental in order to have more life choices is definitely, um, is definitely part of my motivation, whether that means quitting my job, doing, you know, doing another job or just doing whatever job that I'm most excited about. It, it all comes from that place of having more freedom. So, Cliff, I'm just looking at your listing, and I, I notice you are a super host, so you must be doing a lot of things really well. Did you figure everything out by yourself, or did you use certain resources? Um, it's a good question. I, I, don't have, um, I don't have a background in hospitality, but, but one thing that I've had is I love to travel, and I think it's a, with a lot of Airbnb hosts – in in some ways, it, it, I think of it as almost an advantage because I've 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 been to you know lots of countries and I've been a guest at multiple vacation rentals and hotels, and so from that experience, you know what you like and you know what you expect, and so I, I, I kind of create the whole experience just based on what I would like to see, and there was certainly some you know some mistakes that I made. In, in the very beginning. And uh, I was just lucky enough that the guests could tell that I was trying my best and that, uh, uh, and they, you know, gave me great suggestions and uh, I was able to, to fix them up. N nothing major, but little things like I didn't realize that uh, in the beginning that uh, I had a unit that was missing wine glasses. Uh, I was, you know, not quite having uh, a little bit short on towels. So just little things here and there. Um, that I've been able to uh, adjust. Well, that's a good starting point to sort of imagine uh, what you would like to see uh, when you travel, because you're basically that's when you're on the other side, right? So yeah, that's, absolutely. That's a, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good place to start. Uh, that you run into a lot of problems, or, or was it pretty much a smooth ride? Um, I really ran into more complications. Mm -hmm with designing the units themselves and that it's always difficult when you're, when you're dealing with contractors and getting different quotes and, and trying to create, <laughs> um, I would say deadlines and timeframes and everything is getting all, all mixed up and thrown around. By the time I was actually bringing in guests, I found that, um, I, I didn't really have that many 
problems. I found that in a way it was almost easier than, than I expected. So now you're a super host. You've got this terrific business. You've got a bunch of villas. For people who are similarly situated, uh, and, and I'd love it if you could, if we could sort of direct mm -hmm. this answer towards people who have multiple listings, uh, you know, somewhere sure. in the same ballpark. What are your key pieces of advice or, you know, what information can you give out that you've picked up uh, while running your business? Um, wow. I would say that there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that I would say, um, can make things a lot easier. Uh, when you first decide to do it, there's this eagerness to just get everything ready really quick and, and list right away. And I think that that momentum is good, but, uh, what I would advise is get everything ready and then just bring in some of your, your friends or, or even family and, uh, have them stay and just tell them, you know, tell me what's right, but, but really tell me what's wrong and what could be better and be, pretend that you're the pickiest person and the most difficult to please, uh, uh, on the earth. And, and so that experience of just having people kind of give you feedback is invaluable because everyone has their own living habits and what you like may be different than what other people like. And so with the more feedback you have, the, the, the better sense you have of what is kind of that middle ground where it's the most universally perfect place to, to play something or, or to have furniture or, or, you know, the perfect color for, for walls, etc. And so I think that having, doing that in the beginning and then being very honest with, with the guests in the beginning and just saying, Hey, I just got started, you know, please give me any feedback. They're really, I mean, in the beginning, it's, it's really a great opportunity because your initial guests are, are essentially doing quality assurance for you for, uh, for free and they're paying you to stay. So I was always ultra appreciative of the first few guests that, that really helped me, you know, get everything together. And, um, so I'd say that, that, uh, do a trial run, make sure everything, your systems are go. Uh, another piece of advice is that I, I think that, um, there's something really interesting about hosting where there's this kind of a karma where it has to come from the place where you want to offer the best experience possible for a fantastic price. If you come off right in the beginning um, from the standpoint of you haven't even developed a reputation and you just want to you know, make as much money as possible, you're, you're probably not going to be as successful because there's people out there um, that are, are willing to really pay their dues first. And, uh, what, one thing that I did is that pretty much all of the profits that I've made over the first several months, I've put right back into the units in making them better because, you know, that that's part of the reason why, um, I, I still work is because I, I really want to offer the, the best experience for the best price. And, um, and I think that it's very important to, to first it's kind of this ironic thing where if you focus on providing the best experience, you might end up making a lot of money. But if you just focus on making a lot of money, you might end up not offering the best experience and then the whole thing not working out. So there, there's definitely a karma thing involved with hosting where um, you have to come from the right motivation and, and look at things from a long-term perspective. Absolutely, and and that's another thing that's so great about Airbnb. I think because being successful in a in a more monetary uh, way is basically it's almost the same as being successful in creating a, an optimal uh, guest experience. And uh, I totally agree that the, the guest experience is what you just need to focus on. And exactly, the money will the yeah. money will come automatically. Mm -hmm. Now you've uh, you've mentioned to me that you're also a big fan of the sharing economy in general. Absolutely, and so am I. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> I think it's it's changes the world. Yeah, in a very positive way. And uh, so I'd love to get your thoughts on on, on that as well. Yeah, well, um, uh, I'm old enough to remember what life was like before the internet, <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, 
when I graduated from from school uh, in 1998, I was actually thrown right into the the whole dot com boom between the whole ni- 1999 and 2001 area. Um, I was in Silicon Valley, and I actually ran a technical recruitment firm. Pretty much all these companies. Um, were, were my clients. And it's really interesting because at that time, nobody really knew what the internet was and where it was going to go. Um, there was these companies that, you know, they, they would just have a website, theglobe.com, and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're being valued at over a billion dollars and they have absolutely nothing. I mean, there was the ridiculous of that. Uh, ridiculousness of that. There was also, you know, some seeds of greatness. I remember um, some companies like um, uh, uh, Salesforce.com and um, WebEx when they were in their infancy and just, you know, 10, 20 people. And, uh, but, but nobody really knew what was going to happen. And, and now when you're looking at, uh, you know, over 10 years later, you really see what the good is and what the bad is. And I think that Airbnb really embodies and and all the, of the sharing economy really embodies the best of what the internet has has done um it's allowed for uh, a free market where people that are creative and passionate can can create their own careers and opportunities and uh it's really refreshing um i i love to see it um there's a lot of you know other things that I don't like uh, about the internet, like how um, there's uh, you know it's kind of endless clickbait ads and <laughs> kind of uh, a little bit too much uh, noise and and trolling. Uh, but but really, when you look at the the sharing economy and the ability to spread free information, all the forums out there, all, even you know I mean the great podcasts and little niche communities like your podcast. It's, it's just so great. It allows people to really have a a la carte life. You can have a career which you create based on what you love to do. You can, you can look for content that you like. You don't have to watch what's on NBC, CBS, or ABC. And uh, you can really, I mean, I think now more than ever, uh, if you have the ability to create your own direction and the right mindset, you can. I mean, the, there's never been another time where uh, where where it's been a better. It's never been a better time to really create your own life. Absolutely, and uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the sharing economy too. In fact, I think it was episode 39 where I talked about some of the other platforms that are out there. Yeah, and there's uh-huh. there's so many of them. You know, I did some research, and you can you can do pretty much anything through a sharing economy platform these days from from dog sitting to babysitting to car sharing there's meal sharing you can deliver packages you can i mean it's the list goes on and on and uh it's it's really cool how uh how you can use these platforms to create your own little mini business and to uh to just do the things that you're you're passionate about without having to have a, a regular nine to five job, and of course, yeah, uh, yeah. of course, Josefa is uh, is is using Wiseant, and mm-hmm. you you have a pretty good experience with that, Josefa, right? Yeah, exactly. And Wiseant is sort of it's kind of like an equivalent thing for anybody who wants to teach anything. Really, you have people who are coaching soccer on there, um, teaching piano, etc. I use it in particular for math and writing but yeah it's phenomenal it's essentially you can start your own business and you can build up a reputation just like airbnb you get reviewed ratings etc they take a little cut off the top but but it's terrific so yeah i'm massive fan of course in in this particular i mean because this is actually this is a big part of my livelihood now awesome so cliff uh, we're getting to the end of the episode so uh Mm -hmm. thank you so much for being on the show really appreciate your time um, could you let our listeners know how they can get in touch with you and how they can find out more about your Airbnb business in Joshua Tree? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, before I do that, I also just wanted to uh, let you know that um, uh, your book was was very, very helpful in getting up and running when I, I uh, started was starting on Airbnb. Um, I'm a true believer that whenever you want to 
learn anything, the best way to do it is first to look up all of the best rated books on the topic and read them. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, uh, I, you know, I, I highly recommend, uh, get paid for your pad. And, um, and, uh, that was very useful for me. And, uh, for anyone who wants to get in touch with me, uh, my website is starlightvillas.com and my email is info at starlightvillas.com. It goes right to me. Awesome. Uh, we'll put that up in the show notes so people can look it up later at getpaidforyourpet.com forward slash podcast. Um, Cliff, again, thank you so much. And it's great to hear that you enjoyed our book. That's why we put so much effort into it to uh, help people like you get started on Airbnb. So really like to, to hear that, uh, that you enjoyed it. And everybody else, thanks for listening. Every Monday and Thursday, we have another episode. And uh, if you do want to buy our book, you can find it on Amazon. We do have a paperback version as well as a Kindle version available. And if you want to check out the first couple chapters, you can go to getpaidforyourpet.com and you can sign up and we'll send you the first couple chapters for free. So thanks, Cliff. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Josefa. And we'll see you next time. Get paid for your pet. 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 Get paid for your pet.